back with another short video in which together with the recent admission of variant readings in Quranic manuscripts, I hope will help Muslims realize that the Quran is not unique nor does it have a divine origin. I first want to point out that many stories told by Muhammad are not stories that were divine or sent down by Allah, but rather uninspired heretical teachings and fables he simply received hearsay and then gave an Islamic twist and claimed it was from Allah. Unfortunately for Muslims, we do know where these stories come from. They come from Gnostic writings and Jewish fables that predate the Quran. People need to bring their proof and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Hatu burhanakum in kuntum sadiqeen. And that's what I like to use. Just bring your proof if you're truthful. No problem. Let's go over some uninspired sources that predate the Quran in which Muhammad brought from. In Surah 19, we read the story of Mary in the palm tree. That is, Mary who was pregnant with Jesus, traveling to a far place to give birth, ends up resting under a palm tree. Allah tells her to shake the trunk of a tree in order to cause the dates to fall, which she did, and was replenished. However, this story predates the Quran and comes from the uninspired Gnostic writing of Pseudo-Matthew chapter 20. So, was this story inspired by and sent down by Allah? Our survey said... In Surah 17, the story of Muhammad's night journey, which is explained in more detail in Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 58, Number 227, comes from the book of Art of Verif, in which Art of Verif goes on a dreamy journey, and just like Muhammad, he ascends through the various layers of heaven, encountering important people along the way. In fact, we see eight direct parallels between the two stories. So, was this story inspired by and sent down by Allah? Our survey said... <laughs> In Surah 3 and Surah 5, we read the story of Jesus creating birds out of clay and then breathing life into them. We know the story of Jesus creating birds from clay and causing them to fly comes from the Gnostic Infancy Gospel of Thomas, which is dated to the end of the 2nd century, predating the Quran. So, was this story inspired by and sent down by Allah? Our survey said... <laughs> In Surah 18, we read the story of the seven sleepers who slept for about 300 years and afterwards woke up. This story actually comes from two uninspired sources that both predate the Quran, the Syriac homily of Jacob of Sarah, dated to the late 6th century, as well as Gregory of Tours' Latin version from the 6th century. So, was this story inspired by and sent down by Allah? Our survey said... <laughs> In Surah 19, we read the story of Jesus speaking from the cradle. This story actually comes from the Arabic gospel of the infancy of the Savior dated to the 5th and 6th century, which obviously predates the Quran. So, if anyone thought that this was inspired by and sent down by Allah, guess what? Our survey said... <laughs> In Sahih Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 55, Number 543, a story of Adam being a giant like King Kong and Godzilla is a Jewish fable that predates the Quran and can be found in the Babylonian Talmud, Bava Batra 75a. Although this isn't in the Quran, it's still a myth Muhammad heard and borrowed. So, if you thought that the story was sent down by Allah, Our survey said... <laughs> In Surah 5, the story of Cain learning to bury the body of his brother Abel from a raven can be found in Midrash Tankuma, Barashit, and the Targum of Jonathan bin Usayah. So, if you thought this story was sent to Muhammad from Allah, Our survey said... The claim that Jesus wasn't crucified but that it only appeared that he was in Surah 4 actually comes from multiple Gnostic writings that predate the Quran. For example, it's found in the Gnostic writings of the Apocalypse of Peter from the 2nd century and the 2nd Discourse of the Great Seth, which is dated between the 2nd and 4th century. However, by virtue of being Gnostic, both these writings deny that Jesus was a true human and that he was a spiritual being, and this actually contradicts what Muslims believe regarding the person of Jesus. So, if you thought that this was inspired and sent down by Allah, I have to remind you. Our survey said... <laughs> And the last, but definitely not least, Keith Thompson reminds us where Muhammad stole his story of dual Karnain from in Surah 18. Modern scholars have shown the Quranic story of this dual Karnain in Surah 18 actually comes from the pre-Islamic mythical Syriac source called A Christian Legend Concerning Alexander, translated into English by Sir Ernest Alfred Wallace Budge in 1889. When one compares the Quranic story in Surah 18, to the Syriac tale of Alexander the Great side by side, there is no question this is where the Quran got the Alexander fable. 
There are more than 11 similar features between the two stories, such as Alexander having two horns, being given power, the sun rising on the people with no cover, punishment of the unrighteous, Gog and Magog spoiling the land, and the building of a wall as a defense. As Stoneman notes, quote, the commentators on the Quran universally assume that Dual Karnain here in Surah 18 is the name of Alexander. Their assumption was clearly correct, since the two stories here in Surah 18 associated with Dual Karnain are precisely those two stories associated with Alexander in the Syriac legend of Alexander, current shortly before the composition of the Quran. This proves unequivocally the Quran is not of divine origin, but instead stole earlier uninspired mythical stories or legends. So if you thought this story was from Allah, our survey said... So Muhammad is copying the wrong gospel and changing the words. Okay, I am agreeing with you because... So the... Muhammad copied the false gospel? Ah, okay. Do you agree with that? I, I am agreeing with you. Muhammad was known in his day to be a plagiarist, a copycat. He was known to be someone who was simply copying other stories and passing them off as something that Allah sent down and revealed in the Quran. We can see where the Quran gets its material from. We can derive most of the stories from other sources. It's quite clear that after one goes over the evidence that was referenced that what we read in the Quran does not have a divine origin. Now, what about the claim that the Quran is a literary masterpiece? and the challenge to produce a surah like it in order to prove it's not from Allah. The Quran is a unique literary form. It's not like Shakespeare based upon aesthetic perception. It's based on form. It's unique. Can't be matched. If you are in doubt with the authenticity of this particular book, come forth with one surah. Let's see. The Kuffar tried it and we all know that they failed dismally. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So there again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking of the authenticity of that particular book or the Quran. If you have any doubt, then produce a surah, a chapter like it. Unfortunately, the appeal to literary excellence has long been met and therefore proves the Quran is not from God. Here are a few works that are identical to Surah 112. Take a moment to see just how identical they are. Or in other words, men have produced chapters comparable to and even better than the surahs we find in the Quran, in this case Surah 112. And as if that wasn't enough, the Quran's historical inaccuracies were made clear and recently highlighted by Jay Smith, Muslims. Take notes and pause the video as needed. Obviously, an all-knowing God would not have made such historical mistakes as we have just seen. In conclusion, this evidence, together with the recent exhibition of many variant readings found in the Quran by Dr. Daniel Brubaker and his sister Hatun, as well as the admission by Muslims of the holes in the Quranic narrative, its mistakes, its variant readings, and it falling short of being 100% identical to what early Muslims had, there are no more grounds to conclude the Quran is perfectly preserved. The truth is, from the evidence that was provided, the Quran is not perfectly preserved. Rather, it is a book with uninspired stolen stories and historical mistakes, and it's neither superior to other literary works. Please, Muslims, research this, dig deeper, say no more to the lies, leave Islam, and come to Christ. It's very clear to you and to every single very advanced student and specialist that the standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. Mm. Slight differences, like the one I gave you earlier, Malik and Malik. Malik and Malik. Malik and Malik. This is regarded as a variation between Hafs and Warsh. It's very clear to you and to every single very advanced student and specialist that the standard narrative has holes in it. 97% of the text of the Quran is not the first century.